today I'm going to show you how to make a steampunk ring. And rings like this are selling on Etsy. I've seen them priced anywhere from $28 to $55. But I'm going to show you how to make one for under $10 and in under 10 minutes. So, here we go. You will need a jeweler's anvil or something you can use that has a slightly flat surface right here. This is called a horn. And you're going to want to be able to hammer uh, part of your filigree ring base on that horn. You will also need possibly these little teeny tiny screwdrivers, which are watchmakers screwdrivers. And I bought mine on eBay. I think they were about $11 for a set of like 12 of them. These are round tipped rosary pliers. They have wire cutters here. Um, not strictly necessary for this project, but they are, they are a tool that I use all the time, so I always have it with me. E6000, that is one of the critical elements. I use these little tweezers here. These are actually pearl knotting tweezers made in India, but I will be using them for this project, and I will be using a hammer, chasing hammer. I've got two here, but it doesn't really matter what kind you use, you only use it for a few minutes. Some Swarovski crystals, Swarovski, I always say Swarovski, Swarovski crystals flat on the bottom so you can glue them to your watch face, or well, watch, not really a face, watch workings. Um, I'm using hot set crystals, I, I got them in the fabric section of a craft store, but they are Swarovski, and I don't think the hot set glue on the back makes any difference but that's what I'm using and these are the filigree ring bases you can get silver raw brass antique brass uh, I, I've seen them in other finishes as well they run about 350 to 450 each I bought mine at Ornamentia I think you can order them at ornamentia.com and the little watch internal watch workings here these are a little more tricky I bought mine on eBay I bought them in a lot um, I search for things like watchmakers lot broken watches um, watch parts I don't ever search steampunk because if somebody's selling something labeled steampunk then they have probably marked it up because they know that it's you know, popular and people want it. So that tends to be a little more expensive. I, I find lots of these things that are being sold from like estate sales or, you know, somebody's grandfather passed away and, you know, he left a bunch of watch parts that he used to tinker with or something. And I can get them pretty cheap. I got a lot of these. I Depending on where you get them, you know, they can run from like a dollar to two dollars each, but sometimes you have to buy a whole bunch at one time. So... Uh, buying them individually, I've seen places that price them anywhere from five to ten dollars. Um, anyway, so I think that's everything, and I keep some wipers around just in case the glue oozes out and I need to wipe it up. So there we go. I will start making the project. Okay, so I'm going to get a silver ring base. I'm going to put it on the flat horn, and I'm going to tap it. If you don't like the noise. You can get a pot holder, put it underneath, and you're just going to tap it. See, the noise goes away. Turn it around to the other side, because you want it to be even on both sides. You don't want to have, because this is tapered, if you don't turn it around and hammer both sides, it'll be kind of uneven and weird. There we go. And what you're doing is you're creating a flat base for your watch workings to sit on. All right. If you don't do that and you try to put the watch on to something that's curved, it's, it's only going to make contact with the very center of the watch face and that's not going to hold mm -hmm. in place very well. Okay, I'm going to glue this to 
my filigree ring base. This is the one I've chosen because it looks very similar to one that's being sold on eBay, or I'm sorry, on Etsy for um, $55. This also has a crown on it, and it still has its watch face on it. So I'm just going to take my little screwdriver, put it in there, and pry it right off of there. Comes right off. And there's going to be some little tiny gears and, and possibly like a little piston or something, I think they're called, sticking up. I'm going to pull the little gear off. And I'm going to, oops, hear that little snap, just break off that little piston right there. Now, I think it's kind of cool to leave the crown on. I think it makes it look cool. Um, if you want to take the crown off, you can take your pliers and kind of squeeze in there and just pop the crown right off. It'll come right off. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and do that and show you. See, it comes right out really easy. So, there we go. Now I'm going to glue this to the watch base, or the watch base, the uh, ring base. I'm using E6000 glue, which you have to be really gentle with. You don't want to squeeze too hard and have it glop out all over the place. You don't want to break the tube. Don't roll the tube. Now I'm swirling like this so you don't get threads. If you pull straight away you just get a weird thread. But if you kind of swirl it, it won't do that. Anyway, with this tube, you want to squeeze from the bottom. Don't roll it. Be very careful, don't twist it, don't do anything with it, or it'll crack, it cracks really easy, and you have a problem. I also have a slightly tapered tip on this one, so it's easier to work with. You don't want to let it sit too long, or it'll start to harden without you. I'm just going to push that on there. I'm going to let it sit for a second to kind of harden. I'm going to look at it and make sure everything is even, nice and flat. And let it just sit for a second. It'll start to harden. It'll start to harden right away, but you want to let it sit and harden overnight before you start trying to wear it or sell it or do anything with it. I'm using my tweezers to remove the extra glue so it's not rubbing against people's fingers or making a big sticky mess all over the place. Alright. I'm going to turn it over and check it again to make sure it's straight. Alright, now I'm going to glue on the crystals. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of E6000 onto the back of the crystal. I'm holding it with my tweezers. And I'm going to drop it in place. I'm going to tap it a few times. Alright, I'm going to just kind of tap the crystals into place, tap them down into the adhesive, and then I'm going to let them dry.